Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. Last week we spoke about JavaScript modules and within that episode we built a tab system. So with our tab system built, I think it'd be a great opportunity to discuss array roles in more detail and apply it to our tab system. So what is ARIA or ARIA? Um, it's actually an acronym that stands for Accessible Rich Internet Applications. And it's a way to assist people with disabilities, mainly sight, um, in, in using JavaScript heavy um, websites. So Mac has a built-in screen reader that we can use. Um, so as we go on to a tab. Link, tab two. You are currently on a text element. So we don't tab actually get two. that much information. You are currently on a text element. And if we click on these. On a text element. Press, tab two, clickable. We don't actually get much information. I'm not gonna apply everything that we can or we should to this tab system. I just want to run through enough to understand kind of array roles and all the rest of it. We need to put a role of tab list on a surrounding div that represents the list of tabs. Now we use the list here. So the first thing we're going to obviously do um, is to create a div and move those links into the list, to the uh, div that here we go we want to put uh, an area of role and we want to say tab list should we spell that right tab list and now we need an area label to describe the tabs let's do that area label and then i don't know example tabs you'd obviously use something that's relevant to the content that's on the uh, that you're building great Next thing we need to do is put a roll of tab on the buttons. Once again, we aren't using buttons, we are using links. So given that, again, we're not going to waste time here. We're just going to use the, um, we're just going to use a link here. So if we go to the link, make sure we clicked on it and we go here, roll. And we'll add that to all. Brilliant. Flip back. And we need to indicate whether it's selected or not. So uh, the first one is selected. So area selected. Again, this is like a, a state. Oh, yeah. And then we hit true. And then these will obviously be area selected false. Excellent. So we're going to avoid the tab in next. Just want to allow you to hear the difference of, of marking up, marking up a tab system properly, but this, we'd use this for the interactive elements. And then we need to apply a rear controls and that needs to reference the ID of the tab panel that it controls. So we already added IDs to these things. So let's just use those ID. There we go. So coming on to our tab panel now, we need to give each of the tab panels a role of tab panel. So let's just do that. Okay. Roll tab panel. And we need an area labeled by, which needs to represent the ID of the... So we need to give these IDs um, tab, tab link one link to tab link three. If we go in here, here labeled bar tab link one. So let's now modify our JavaScript and get those working. And for speed, I've kind of commented out what we need and then I can just run through these. So the first thing we want to do is run through all the links and select them, set them all to false, right? That's the easiest way to kind of do that. And then we also want to, um, oh, where's that hidden actually? Do we miss the hidden? I think that's optional, but again, I kind of took it from these, these examples here that you've got a hidden thing here. So again, not rocket science, just 
just taking from the example and kind of putting two, two, two and two together. So again, <clears throat> selecting all of the links to false and all of the all of the tab bodies to hidden true. And then this next line is that we are taking the link that we've clicked and setting that to select it as true. And then this one's a bit trickier, but it basically replaces this line. We're taking now the area controls attribute, which use that value, we're adding a hash. So we're just getting the ID of the element, essentially the same thing as this, but we're just using the area controls now. And we're adding that class of active and removing the attribute hidden. Now, the moment of truth, what does this now look like or sound like using a screen reader? So let's open our screen reader again. Samuel's Fantabulous Project, web content. So once again, you are currently on web content. To enter the web area, press control, option, shift, down arrow. Uh, control, option, shift, down arrow. In Samuel's Fantabulous Project. There you go. Again, I hope you can hear that. I'm no expert in this. Web content list three items. So you can hear that. Currently on a list inside web content. So we're on a list. Uh, this is our old one, and if we just navigate through. Beginning on text. Link. Tab two. Tab two. No information. Currently on a text element. Content one. Tab one selected. Tab one of three. You are currently on a tab one of three inside web content. To select this option, press Control Option Space. So you can hear that we're in a tab, we're in a group of tabs that's one of three, and the current one that we're on is selected. So I hope that gives you an idea about ARIA and how you can go about creating interactive components and making them more accessible for your Webflow websites. This episode was taken from a longer, more in-depth explanation of the subject matter. So if you're interested to learn more, then I suggest you click the link up in the card. If you haven't subscribed yet, then please do so. And until next time, happy no coding.